Anna! Hey, lower your voice. You're sitting on a bucket. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? It looks like you're on lunch break in the back of a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> are you hiding from the kids? And you. Uh, it's Friday night. I'm, I'm reading my book. What's the problem? Well, this is the problem right here. And this morning with the kids. Nobody's sitting down for breakfast. It's, you know what it is? We have no traditions. Well, I do. On Friday nights, I sit on a bucket and I read my book. Oh. I mean, until now. Now I gotta find a new hiding spot. No. I'm telling you, we are dropping the ball. All right? We, yes, we gotta start doing things together. Mott's family's killing it. Oh, Mott. Now it makes sense. Jolly Green Giant gets in your ear and there goes my Friday night. Hello, Hi. everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello, Erin. Thank you for being here. We're so excited. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, first off, what is it like to be married to Kevin James? Because I hear it's a hoot. Well, it, I can, we are in real life married, too. I take my work very seriously. Um, it's great. He's a wonderful TV husband. He's just like the kindest, most um, generous performer. Uh, he really wants like your input in terms of what to make a scene work and what's the funniest. And if you have an idea, he's willing to do it or just a um, nice, pleasant guy. Guy. You know? He's back. You know, everybody loves King of Queens, of course. So we were all very excited when Kevin Kim Wade came on because yeah. we were waiting for him to come back to. He's TV. back. He's back. And you're kind of, uh, you know, you are the new wife in town. Uh, forget <laughs> Leah Ramini. We have uh, we have Aaron Hayes. Um, what was it that drew you into the script and to the story? Um, you know, when this. I was in, I mean, I love working on sitcoms. It's just a lovely life and you can like see your family and, and you just get like to rehearse something all week that you're building up to a live show. Um, so I'm always looking for an opportunity to get back into that and to find something that works and is funny. And when I read uh, the script, it just, it didn't, it was like a fun family sitcom that it was so easily accessible, and I was like, I, I get this. I think there was a number of years where I was really fighting doing the like wife who wants to have it all. Um, and I think then I realized, I was like, oh, it's because that's me, what I, that's me. You know, and I'm like, I don't, maybe I, I kind of fought against doing something that was close to my own life, but it was just the right thing at the right time, and I, was like, stop fighting it, settle into it. I've got some truth to tell in this particular story. Um, so I was just so excited to, when it happened and got the job. Yeah. So for people who haven't seen Kevin Can Wait, can you give us a little bit of a background? Um, so yeah. Kevin, who plays Kevin on the show. Uh, it's a reach. Yeah, he is, it's a real reach for him. A reach guy. Totally different. No. Um, so he's <laughs> There's a part of me that's like, oh, you just were like, you, that's a little lazy. <laughs> like, like he might not respond, you know? He just like, let's just keep it easy. Just call me Kevin. If you, you say it, I will respond. <laughs> You're like, can I be Aaron? Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> um, so his character is a retired police officer. Yes. So I had no idea about this. Like, as a cop, after you work 20 years, you can retire. So there's guys, if they join the force at 20, they get retired at 40 if they want to retire. Um, so this is a guy who's, him and his buddies went through the force together, and now they're retired with still a lot of life left to live. And so it's kind of like, what's next? You know, what is, he has his expectations of what retirement is going to be. And um, I think as the wife, I have expectations of what his retirement is going to be and the kids and his friends. So now he's just a um, sitcom lad trying to have it all. <laughs> and is that hard for you to play this role where, you know, your husband is retired and gets all this free time and you are going to work and you're raising three children and... Um, do you have any parallels that you bring to the show in real life or you don't know this kind of situation? I mean, I've, I've always been an actor. I've had very few day jobs. I've been lucky that way. Um, so I'm the other person in the relationship. Like, you know, if I'm not working, I'm talking to my husband. I'm like, let's take a vacation. And he was like, I have a job. <laughs> I have to go there every day. Why do you not understand that? I'm like, but I have a week off, come on. Um, so I think it's a little bit the opposite. But to play, I mean, I think to, to jump into a story where I am, you know, married for 20 years. Like, I've, I've been with my husband since high school, pretty much. We have two kids. Like, this part of the story, I, I get. I get a long-term relationship like that and the pluses and minuses and what's funny about it. And um, 
so that part of it I relate to 100%. And you guys filmed this out in Long Island, correct? On Long Island. On Long Island. On Long Island. Is anyone here from Long Island? <laughs> we got one. First, we the, got one. This is the first sitcom that's filmed out? Yeah. We're the first, Long like, Island? you know, live audience taping of a sitcom that's filmed on Long Island. Kevin's from Long Island. So it's it's a trip. It's It's really interesting. I mean, it's tricky. There's not the support system, you know, if a camera breaks, a camera breaks, like, there's there's no time. You can't just run to the next sound stage and get a uh, part that you need. Um, or, you know, there's not a prop house down the street. But, so I think the aspects for the crew are tricky, but it's fun. The audiences are, are mostly Long Island folk, and they, they've just had the greatest time coming out there, so it seems they're lying to us, but um, it's, been, it's been fun. Does it ever make you uh, more nervous that there's a live audience there if a, if a joke doesn't hit the way you want it to? Or, or, and how many takes do you guys usually do? Uh, it doesn't make me more nervous. I come from a theater background, and so it actually makes me more comfortable because you get that, and you get the energy, and I don't get too, like, nervous about it. I can kind of focus it or, you know, or ignore it <laughs> if it's too nerve-wracking. But you, you do find out very quickly if a joke doesn't land, and then you've got that sounding board, and you're like, well, quick, right, right another, they've got jokes in the wings, yeah. you know, so then they'll change the script a little bit, and we'll go again. Um, you know, we'll do a scene, like, four times, three, four times, something like that, and then we might pop in to catch a moment if some, you know, uh, if they want to try like one more joke or if they the camera didn't get it for some reason. Yeah. Um, but not, I think audiences are surprised when they come and if they've never experienced a taping before. They're like, but I just saw that scene. Yeah. Why are we doing that again? Doing that again? And, and they have the pump up guy, right? Who gets Yeah, we got our warm up guy, Joey Cola. He's awesome. And Sean is a DJ and they kind of um, chat amongst themselves and keep everybody's energy up and pass out pizza and candy and nut-free candy. They're very thoughtful. <laughs> I need to go to one of these tapings. Right? I love nut-free candy. Come for the nut-free candy. Do you guys improv at all? Um, there's some. Yeah. There's not much. It's a tightly scripted show that they work on all week long. You know, we've got a very talented room of writers. Um, but that doesn't mean there's not room for a little bit of play, you know, especially if you get a couple takes. You get a good take, and then the next one, you're like, I might throw something in. You're like, Go for it. And, of course, you have tons of experience on television. We love you. Well, I love I mean, you. We're getting Chil Hollywood. Children's oh, wow. Hospital. Do you guys watch yeah. Children's Hospital? Uh, I, was so, I was so sad when that show ended. Hey, so was I. Yeah. Was it a surprise to you guys? It was. You know, we thought our seventh season was such a dream to shoot. We initially started shooting it over winter, over December or December and January when we started the show, and um, because that was the time when it was easiest to get all these casts together. None of us had a contract. It was really just who was available that season to shoot. Um, and then we moved to the summer. We moved to one building, and everything was there. And we had just set it up so smooth and the scripts were done and we could enjoy it that we were all so sure and then uh, Rob Cordry just kind of decided like if you're not hungry anymore then then are you full like like is there a let's go out on top you know and I think for for the actors it was six weeks of work a year it was like summer camp but for the creators and for the writers it was a you know it's pretty full-time job so we did it and the door's not closed to maybe do another special or, you know, something in the future, which I've got my fingers crossed for. It really was a dream job. Yeah. yeah. Emmy nominated dream Emmy job. Nominated. What was that like to be, wake up and, and find that you're nominated for an Emmy? Something I'm sure you I, were very for excited a about. For a, like an 11 minute show on at midnight on Adult Swim where you make a lot of pee jokes, like <laughs> to then go like, <laughs> I was what? Uh, it was. I mean, I was ecstatic. There's no other word. It was just, it was surreal, and it was so cool. And, and the, the show won, and Rob Cordry, he won a performance one. I didn't win, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was just like that little time period of it being this possibility, and just to have been, like, been nominated was, I mean, you, you do. You dream about that kind of stuff. You don't count on it, and you certainly don't gear your career towards it, but um, it was a lovely little gift. 
was it like for you to go from a show like Children's Hospital to a show like Kevin Can Wait? It's a totally different... It's very know, different. Yeah. Uh, uh, was that a challenge for you or...? It wasn't because I have done this kind of show a bunch in my career. I have done, you know... There, but the, it's such different sensibilities. It just was like wrap my head around like, well, if I'm going to throw an improv in, it shouldn't... It, it needs to be above, you know, above board. Um, you can't... It's not the same kind of humor that is... Children's Hospital was much more... You know, we do like a genre show and we would comment on that genre with our opinions about those particular kinds of jokes. So you're doing a classic joke, but you're you're also commenting on the joke itself, um, which was always a learning experience for me and to be involved in that show with people who are so good at that. Um, so that just like, and opened up so many doors for me. It was, you know, like the um, street cred kind of comedy. And I love that. And then I love this because I've never had anything that my kids could watch. I've never had anything that families could watch that all my nieces and nephews could watch and feel good about and, and laugh as a family. Like, you know, no, no shame in that game. Uh, I'm really happy about, about this new avenue and I hope that this will open up new doors in the future and, and that those doors, like, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with having a hit sitcom on CBS, too. Do you know what it takes to get onto a network show that lasts? Like I, like I was saying, like, I've been around working for a long time. I started as a guest, as an extra. I started doing extra work, and then I got in the union, and I got one line, and then I got three. Like, I have, I feel that I have put my foot on every rung of the ladder to get to this particular rung. And um, I know how easy it is to get stuck on one, you know, to like win the lottery and get on a TV pilot is amazing. But then to get it picked up, you're like, what's happening? And then they're like, well, we're not gonna go a full season. You're like, but that doesn't matter. It always matters. Uh, and then so to get given a full season order of a show, I feel so lucky and I feel so, happy to be involved in it, and I, I am just gonna, I will ride it off into the CBS sunset as long as CBS uh, will let me. Yeah, of course. I mean, we've seen so many of these, especially CBS sitcoms, do so well and, and perform. Were you super nervous going into it and how you guys could make the sitcom stand out from the pack? Yeah, there's a lot of expectation for something like this, you know, and like, it's like his face and they're like, he's back, and you're like, oh, you know, I hope, people want to watch it and I hope that people enjoy it um, because there is an audience for traditional sitcoms like this. And so we're just trying to do it right. And yeah, it is, it's nerve wracking, but it's also really exciting. And I try not to think about that part of it too much and just enjoy it for however long it lasts. Because it's a crazy world out there right now for television with all of these streaming sites. Yeah. There's so much content. So much content and so much of it is so good. Yeah. But it's nice to see that a sitcom can still stand out from the crowd, especially in this day and age where you can go to Netflix and well, watch Gilmore Girls reruns. And That's the thing. Like, you can enjoy Kevin Can Wait while also enjoying Fleabag, like, which I do. Uh, you can do that. You can watch Orange is the New Black and go watch The Great Indoors. Like, there's no... I think people are... You can either be super specialized and go like, oh, I only like this type of comedy and that's all I watch, or you can watch all of it. And um, there's a place for all of it. I think the game is changing in terms of the expectations of viewerships and what makes a hit. Um, you know, back in the day, like in the, of the, you know, reigning sitcoms, those numbers were, nobody gets those kind of numbers anymore because the game is wide open now. Which is great, because then it makes people hopefully work a little harder to get the eyeballs that they do get. And what is it about comedy? Because uh, you tend to stay in the comedy genre. What is, that, what is it about comedy that draws you in? Or would you ever want to do a, a drama series down the line? I would do, 100%, uh, I would do a drama. It's just, they're different doors. Yeah. You start in one, and you get known as one, and those are the doors that continue to open for you. Uh, I think right now, in terms of my career, uh, I am, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm very heavily employed at the moment, but outside of this, the work that I want to start to steer into is stuff that is much different, that would go a little darker or more serious. 
so that I can continue to work when I'm 80 if I want to. You know, the more multifaceted you are as a performer and the more things you can do, the more things, but you have to, like you have to do it for them people to think that you can do it. So it's like, it's the catch 22, you know, like they're not gonna hire you unless they've seen you do it before, but you can't do it unless they hire you. So that's, but that's the next part. That's the next thing I gotta figure out. You know? And you're also a writer. Have you, you, yeah. Are you writing a feature length? I'm writing a fe I mean, I'm revising, you know, uh, aren't we all? Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is, again, like more of a drama for myself so that if no one's gonna put you in it, make it yourself. There was an interesting, a friend was like, well, are you gonna direct it? I was like, hold your horses. <laughs> I didn't even know I was a writer, so let me just figure this out. I don't know if I want, I don't know if I would like that. I mean, I'm very bossy, but, so probably I would, but like one step at a time, take it easy. So what is this script about? Can you give us a little take? It's a mother-daughter story, yeah. uh, like a road trip kind of coming home type of story, I'll say that. Is it one of those things, I'm always curious, because I always sit down and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna write a screenplay today, no problem, Let's, I got this idea, and I write like a page and, and then I'm done. No. Uh, when do you find like that that inspiration and that motivation to kind of? I had a really, I had a, a very supportive husband uh, because I couldn't. We have two kids, you know. Like I don't. How do you do that? Like to to try to schedule your creativity between eight thirty and two fifteen when you need to leave to pick them up is it's tricky. There's only so much coffee, and then you just and then you clean the house because you also got to go to the grocery store. And then I'm an actress, so I got to go to the gym and I got to get a haircut once in a while. So. Uh, <laughs> It was hard, so I did all this prep work, and then I was like, babe, I'm gonna go away for a week, yeah. and, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do that, can I? And he's like, yes, go do it. So I took a week and went to Palm Springs and just holed up in this Airbnb and, and like banged out a draft, and, and you know, now we shall see what, if I can get the momentum to keep all that going and get things, I don't, I don't know this world, so I'm diving in and see what happens. It's great that you have a husband that lets you do that, though, and you should have been like, I'm going to extend this by one more week, yeah. babe. <laughs> listen, listen, I, yeah, no, but, but, yeah, I can't really extend, and now I have, like, no greens for it. I get no leeway because I'm here in New York and they're in Los Angeles, so when I go home, it is, like, 100%, like, make the dinners, do the drop-offs, do the laundry, do the this, like, snuggle, snuggle, snuggle. Um, it's a heavy schedule of snuggling. We got alarm set. <laughs> Uh, you are yeah. ba I mean, you are based in Los Angeles, or your family's yes. there. So, how often are you in New York uh, for the show? And, and well, what I'll kind say of strain it's, is it's, it's it's tricky. Sitcom schedule's tough. You do like two or three weeks, and then you have a week off. <laughs> it's grueling. Uh, <laughs> no, I go home every time we have a week off. I'm on a plane. I'm going home. Yeah. yeah. And do your kids enjoy watching you on the show? They love the yeah. show. I mean, they love Chael more than they love me. Chael. Uh, He's great. Like they like they laugh. They do. They love the show. But I think they've they're they're like, you're just being you. Yeah. You're just like a mom. So what's new about that? Look at these other characters. <laughs> like, yeah, but me. Yeah, but me. Watch me. Mom's yeah. there. You have three kids on the show, I, right? Yes, on the show we have three kids. Two kids. Two girls in real life. Two girls in real life. Yeah. All right, do you find there's uh, similarities between what you're going through in your real life as a parent and what you're going through on the show? Certainly, although the kids on the show were older than my kids, um, but Taylor, who plays Kendra, will uh, laugh at me sometimes and be like, "You're such a mom." Because I'll be like, "Are you? Did you get your scarf? Do you? Are you warm enough, honey? Are you gonna? Do you want us to pick you up on the way to dinner?" She's like, I, "I'm 23. <laughs> like, are you, stop being such a mom. Good lord, That's yeah." Cute, though it's like a friendship and and some sort of mom attitude towards. Yeah. But the actress who plays Kendra is, is great on this show. Taylor, Taylor. yeah. She's, she's a lot great. of fun. Yeah, Taylor's um, great. And then we have uh, Mary Charles Jones, who plays our uh, Sarah. And then James DiGiacomo, who plays our youngest son, Jack. They're so talented. They're so great. And I look forward to, you know, learning more about the kids. Yeah, were you excited to be a mom to a boy on the show? I know, yeah. yeah. It's like, but, well, yeah, because they're not, it's not my kid. Like, we get to, like, hang out, and then you walk away. And But it's good, because I'm learning about teenagers, like, you know, what their deal is and how much screen time they have and all of that, you know, how they react to their friends and kind of watching them do this is a little... Because there's a thing about parenthood, like, you only... 
know the age your kids are. Like, I know seven and nine. I don't know 10. Next year, I'll know 10. But like when I get around older kids, I'm like, so what are you allowed to do? Can you have soda? <laughs> you know? What are your parents' stance on sugar? I mean, it's a good yeah. prep for when your daughters are teenagers. Because yeah, get right? ready for that. Because yeah. I, I was a teenager once. I'm sure you, you were? I never were was. You a teenager? I never was. I've always just been this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a scary time. Yeah. You've got a few more years. A couple more years. And yeah. can you tell us what's to come on uh, tonight's episode? And then we have one more before the holidays. Yes. Yeah. Uh, tonight's episode is really fun. It was like the episode that took us forever because it was all these, there's a lot of exterior stuff. Billy Joel is on it. So we shot this like in September, but then we had to wait because the guy, because you know, because of when Billy Joel was available to shoot this particular segment. So that was like a month later, and then we had to do this whole exterior thing that took, you know, was like, a, you know, a three weeks later. So I barely remember this episode, but it's, uh, he freaks out that we have no family traditions, so he starts to uh, try to come up with what our family tradition would be. And it's just like forcing the issue. And it's like enough is enough, and it's all these things that don't work. So um, it's fun. I was trying to solve a problem. I liked last yeah. episode too with like the food truck. Yeah, that was that one was really fun we to do. We all want to own a food truck, don't we? I mean, I do. I, I do, do a lot in life. Every time someone says they want to like open a restaurant or do that, I'm like, you know, you have to be there every day, right? Yeah, or like a bookstore. You're like, you know, you're there every day. Especially like every day on a, a tiny truck doing what you would do in a, in a huge kitchen at a Can restaurant. Can you imagine how stinky everybody is like, coming off a food truck? I don't know. So much just hot, just sweat. Kevin really stinky on set. Is that what you're trying to tell us? <laughs> Dear Internet. Aaron Hayes today said Kevin was really stinky on set. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> I want to open it up to the audience. So if you guys have some questions. Hey, Aaron. Thank Hi. you for being here. Uh, what's your favorite classic TV sitcom character and, and how have they influenced you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Honestly, like most of my, I have these weird sitcoms that were very important to me. Like, um, like the Monkees was really important to me, uh, and then Friends was huge. Just that, like they and the, all six. It's a, such a good example of of character development in terms of how specific these six people got over the years, um, and how you could lean into that the weird, con like, you know, control freak thing and still be grounded and still be funny. Um, so those were, and then, like, cheers. Che like, Shelley Long was such a good snob. Like, she was, but she was also so relatable and you were like, oh, she stood so straight. And so, like, I just thought she was, she was so good on that show for the while that she was on it. Um, yeah, I think those ones. Hey, um, so how early on in your career did you know that you wanted to get into acting and was that, did you ever think that you might do something else? During I really time? have never had a plan B. I started doing plays when I was like seven years old. I think Grinch Who Stole Christmas was my first one. Um, it was like overly rouged and, and I did my own makeup, you guys. So I looked like just like a little street walker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, red lipstick, let's do it. Uh, now I did plays all throughout high school and then went to the University of Colorado and got a BFA in performance there and then moved to San Francisco because if you're from there, you don't move to Los Angeles first because Los Angeles is, is bad. Even if you've never been there, you're like, everybody's so fake. And then it was miserable and moved to LA uh, and was like, oh, work. Um, so I really always knew that I wanted to do it and was very lucky in the fact that I have extremely supportive parents who always just were like, you know, you create your own reality. If that's what you want to go do, go do it. Learn how to do it and go do it. And if you don't end up doing that, then we're confident you'll figure something else out. Um, so they never discouraged that dream at all. And I think you know, it was very funny. Like every, my mom would be like, Aaron, when you were Lori in Oklahoma, 
I could not take my eyes off you. You had such presence. And I was like, you're so sweet, but you're my mom. <laughs> of course you're going to say, like, what parent doesn't walk home from the play their kid is at and go, like, I couldn't even watch anybody else, you know? But it, like, it took me a while to realize that. I was like, oh, my God, my mom, you know, my parents think I'm great. But it was, a very, it was this lovely gift that they gave to me in childhood of that confidence to go, like, go do it, girl. You got it. Go do it. Who's next? One more. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Um, so, first of all, I love watching the show because I'm actually from Massapequa, so it's fun hey. to see all those references. <laughs> um, so my question for you is, is there any times uh, during the tapings that you kind of break character and giggle because of something funny Kevin says or any of the other characters? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like every time there's something somebody will do, or you know, when they th when they throw in new things, or uh, honestly, the scripts change every day, so that you're going in like knowing the script as well as you can. But you oftentimes we will just you know people just you see that you see that them go dead inside, and you're like you don't you have no idea what's supposed to happen next, do you? And then Kevin will do something or say, you know, that's just off the cuff to make the audience laugh. And um, they're very fun tapings. How was that taping with Adam Sandler and Kevin James? That must have been pretty fun. It was great. Dude, they didn't know any of their lines. <laughs> the two of them. And then, like, just watching two people that are so comfortable performing together is, is fun. They have a shorthand, and they are such good friends. And then, you know, they've worked together so much. So seeing them... Just do what they do it was fun. I was like, I want to get in there. Yeah, are there going to be other, any other uh, Adam appearances or any other guest star appearances coming up? Uh, I'm not sure that we have all that planned or they haven't told me about it. But um, I think right now we're taking a time to kind of just flesh out more the characters that we have set and see, like what I was saying, like see what makes them quirky and weird and interesting so that viewers will continue to want to watch us. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's on tonight, right? It's on every Monday? It's on every Monday night at 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Central CBS. Hello. Well, thank you, Erin, for being oh, here. Thank, thank you, guys, guys for the thank great you. question. And good luck with the show. Yeah.